What's going on everyone? It's KT Pop here with a new video for you all. Today I want to start a brand new series all about K-pop group debuts. And we're going to start with the band group Exonary Heroes. I really like to keep on top of as many debuts as I can. I'm super open to new idols, concepts, groups, songs. I like all different types. I kind of take on probably about three to four new groups a year, which can be pretty detrimental to my time, wallet, and the space in my apartment. I will just mention that 2023 was a bit of an outlier because it was a huge year for boy group debuts, especially with the finishing of Boys Planet. But the group I want to talk about today debuted in 2021. They are part of JYP Entertainment and they're actually the second band that have come out of JYP. So the first group was Day6, who debuted quite a while ago now. Everyone was very, very excited to see a new band coming out of JYP and just a band in general, because not a lot of groups get debuted as a band. Exonary Heroes are a six member group and they officially debuted on December 6th of 2021. They actually debuted with a digital single called Happy Death Day. This single did not have a physical album release, which I was actually pretty disappointed about, and I think a lot of others were as well. Their first physical release wasn't actually until July 2022, so a six month gap between their actual debut and the first physical album release. I actually don't think this was a very good business decision by JYP. Six months is too long to have between comebacks, let alone between a debut and a physical release. I definitely didn't forget about them during this six month period, but I think some people would have. Groups are constantly debuting and if you're not putting them in front of people's faces, you know, every one, two, three months, I think people lose interest. So I think the initial fact that JYP was releasing a new boy band really piqued the interest of a lot of people. Then when all the concept videos and photos started coming out, people got even more excited. The first thing that came out were these concept videos of the members. So each member had their own little video. It kind of set up this origin story of the members being these aspiring musicians that were all doing different things in their lives, but all they really wanted to do was be musicians. In the videos, they discover what is called the platform, which is like this virtual online world where musicians can go and like jam together. So I think this initial concept was really nice. It, it showed all of the members having this similar goal and all ending up on this virtual platform together. We then got performance videos of all the members playing their instruments. So it really gave you an insight into who these guys were, what they are good at, what they play. That's what you need. You need to have that initial connection with these members. So we finally got a look at all the members of Exonary Heroes. We have Gonel on drums, Jungsoo on keys, Kaon on rhythm guitar, Oda on synth, Junhan on lead guitar, and Juyon on bass guitar. I mean, it's pretty convenient that all of these guys all played different instruments and all had the same dream and ended up on the same virtual platform. But, you know, we don't worry about that. From the initial concept videos, you couldn't really tell what the actual aesthetic of Exonary Heroes was gonna be. It wasn't until the concept photos started coming out that you could really see what the actual aesthetic was going to be. And that to me was pretty exciting. There was two sort of sets of concept photos that we got. The first one was that more regular street style teenage boy aesthetic. The other concept was this sort of more out there look where I think it's supposed to be them when they're in the virtual world. So they have a lot more crazy makeup, cool hairstyles, kind of more futuristic style outfits. And that started to get me excited that this was gonna be sort of a different style of boy group band. After all these initial concept videos and photos, we then started getting audio teasers. Very much like what I used to listen to when I was a teenager. The sound of these teasers was very different to anything I'd really heard in K-pop before. It really had that sort of nostalgic pop punk sound, not something that we'd heard from Day6 or really any other K-pop group band in the past. Then the music video teaser started coming out. That's when I was like, this is it. I'm gonna be so into this group, I can feel it. Happy Death Day. There they are. 
It's so good. From the start, the song. These outfits, seriously, I really love the colored plaid. And they're supposed to look like clowns, like at a birthday party. There you go. The vocals. I just love how unique all the vocals are in this verse. Here's the virtual world, the, um, the platform where they go to like jam. Chorus. That guy has the best fucking vocals. It's so visually appealing, all these colors. So sick of the face. I like songs that have like multi-layered choruses and this has like a really cool second part to the chorus. His charisma is so fucking good. Juon is just like made to be a star. Again, these unique vocals. I like the little bit of acting here. I still love this song so much, like three years later. It's such a banger. Whee! Yeah, so I think the song is all about like how people celebrate really meaningless things and they don't actually like really care about them, like birthdays. And how it's just like, yeah, here it says, you know, you're just like another step closer to death. Like, it's like a death day, not a birthday. I mean, it's pretty depressing for a K-pop song, but I like these white outfits too. Happy birthday. It's just so unique. Like, we'd never heard anything like this before. And it's pretty high budget as well, this music video. And there's like a little warning message at the end. Error message. So cool. See, I think the major like takeaways the first time I watched the music video, I was like, oh my God, this song is crazy. It's so unique. I haven't heard anything like this in K-pop before. Really had those nostalgic vibes for me. Also the outfits and the makeup are amazing, especially at the start in those like plaid outfits with the clown makeup, all the jewels on the faces. I really, really love that. They all really shone in this video. I think especially for me, Jungsu and Odi really stood out for me when I first got into Xenary Heroes. They are the two that are on like the keyboard and the synth on the sides. Jungsu especially, I really was very enamored by him at first because I think his vocals in this song are just really, really interesting. He looks really cute in the video. Overall, a really great music video for a really great song. Even though the song does have some kind of like negative connotations and is kind of like a bit of a weirdly themed song, it works. It's a bit of a darker concept, a lot more like, you know, punk vibes. And I think it works for this kind of group and these kind of idols with this concept. So their first stage performance at a music show was on Music Bank on the 10th of December. So just a few days after the music video dropped. I think the debut stage is where you can really see the vibes, charisma and chemistry of a group. With a band, it's obviously a little bit different to like an idol K-pop group because they are just playing instruments on stage. They're not dancing or maybe interacting with each other as much. I'd never really been into any other K-pop bands before. So this was kind of a new experience for me to see a band group perform on stage. But I think it really takes like another whole bunch of skills, you know, you can't really cover anything up. Like you're there, you're playing your instrument in front of everyone. There's nowhere to hide. And you do really still have to show off your charisma and your chemistry just by standing there. You don't really have a lot of room to move, obviously, and you don't have a lot of room for expression and personality and all that kind of stuff. So you really have to like make your moments have an impact. Yes, yeah, so this is their debut stage on Music Bank. This is so cool that they all get their own little introduction.
Yes, like even with like a little name card and everything. Oh, he's so little. I wonder if they're actually playing live here. Sometimes when idol bands play, they're kind of just miming the playing and they're not actually plugged in. Like they're playing, but they're not plugged in. So I'm not entirely sure. Go, little title card, happy death day. All right. You can definitely hear the live vocals though. The set's kind of cool. It's like a, like they're in a garage or something, just like jamming in a garage. Not my favorite outfits from the music video. I think the next stage they did it in Kigayo, they wore the um, suits, like all the different colored plaid suits. He looks so nervous. I actually can't imagine doing like your first ever stage. Oh my God. Okay. He didn't sing that. That's okay. I think if you're the drummer, it wouldn't be so nerve wracking because you're not having to do a lot of the camera work like the others are having to do. He's actually my favorite now. Um, Connell, he's the drummer. He's my favorite now. But back then, definitely Jungsoo and OG were my, were my favorite, like the ones on the keyboards. Oh, this is cool. It's kind of funny though, because they, <laughs> they literally just move from like one set to another set and all the like instruments and stuff, they just carry them over there. It's kind of stupid, but I think the point is, is that they've moved from like the real world to the virtual world. Like this is the platform now. Imagine if he had to like carry his drums over there. <laughs> Mm, I just love his vocals. I think Oji really smashes this stage. Him and Jungsoo were actually supposed to be um, like in an idol group, like dancing and everything. So I think they're a lot more trained to be on stage than the others. It's nice. You see their charisma come out a bit more than the other members. Like in later stages, in different comebacks, Juyon, who is on the bass, he is probably the best on stage. Like his charisma comes out so much later. And it might have something to do with the fact that he doesn't really get a lot of good lines in this song. Like he can't show his voice off. Oh, we missed Junan's little bit as well. The um, lead guitarist, he always is just kind of like at the back doing his own little thing. But he's a great guitarist. I think they're doing a good job. Like they're all pretty young. And I've seen like stages of this after, you know, like after they've done a few, they really do build in confidence. See, they did great. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, he's definitely the visual of the group as well. Oh, I love the pink hair. So overall, I think the stage, they did pretty well. Um, you could obviously tell that they were a little bit nervous and a couple of them did shine a bit more than the others. I think definitely the two that were trained to be idols were a lot more charismatic on stage off the bat. But yeah, overall a pretty good performance and I liked that they had the two different sets to show like the regular world and the virtual world and they just got better from here. Pretty good debut stage. So as I said at the start of the video, unfortunately this was just a digital single release. So even though they had all the concept videos, photos, music videos, stages, there was no actual album that came out at this time. The first physical release was Hello World that came out in July 2022. So I just wanted to show you these quickly so you could see what their first physical debut release was. So I was super excited when I could finally get my hands on a physical release for Xenary Heroes. So the title track of this was Test Me which was a really, really great follow-up, I think, to Happy Death Day. The other songs on this album were actually really great as well. Um, Knockdown is really great and the Sucker Punch. Like overall, I think Xenary Heroes have really good B-sides as well as their title tracks. So if you're gonna check them out, seriously try listening to the whole album because it's just kind of full of bangers. So there were two versions. Which one should we look at first? Let's look at the big one first. This I think is supposed to just look like a kind of, maybe like a school notebook or something. 
or maybe like a music book. I'm not sure what they were going for here, but it came with the inclusions all sort of in the little pocket here. But the pocket is kind of shit. Like it goes all the way through. So what's to stop your inclusions from just like falling through there? Came with some stickers and like a little fold out card thing. So I got Julian looking cute and one of these like little pop out card things. I think Stray Kids had one similar to these too. Just a pretty simple photo book with the binding there. I don't mind this kind of packaging actually. It feels quite sturdy. Cute. I like this kind of scrapbooky style. I like that. Pictures of them with their instruments. Yeah, so these are pretty casual photos. And then I think there was like another concept that was a little bit more. Yeah, so here you go. Again, similar to Happy Death Day, they have the kind of two concepts of like regular teenage boys and then the boys that are in platform in this virtual world. So they've gone with that again with these photos with all like the accessories and leather, colorful hair. Yeah, I much prefer these photos. I think they're really cool. They've got um, their own little guitar picks and it's got like the logo on it and he's got an earring. So cool. Little messages. I think these photos are really, really cool. Well, look at him. Yeah, they even look like a lot more mature in these than they did, you know, in the photos from six months ago. He looked so young. Well, I know it's only six months, but like he looked so baby before. And then they styled him to like look a bit more like hardcore. Damn. He's so visual. Oh my God. Crazy. Everyone was kind of obsessed with him when they first saw him for the first time. But yeah. So pretty simple and it's all just like really papery. Like there's no um, like glossiness or anything to any of the pages and the CD at the back. Hello world. The second version, I think it's supposed to kind of look like an iPad or something. You can kind of see it's got like a little button here and a logo, like it's supposed to be some sort of ex Heroes iPad, I don't know. And then it just slides out like that. Mine's actually all like super scratched already and scuffed up. It's not the best thing to store and like trying to get it back in, you kind of, yeah, it's not, it's not great. But let's have a little look inside. The inclusions came in this little envelope. Hello world. Oh, I keep saying it like that. Stickers and the little fold out card. This time I got Jungsu. I don't think he, he might've still been my bias at this time actually. The CD came in a little pouch. I like these colors actually, red and blue together with black. Yeah, different again concept from the other photo book. It's all like matrix reloaded. Yeah, really just going for that like virtual world, like yeah, I guess the matrix and platform might be um, in the same universe, I don't know. They just look so cool. Okay, there we go. This looks like Spaceman. Wow, that's a look, just a full Full silver chrome outfit. Very space, much space. This hair is so cool. I wish I could dye my hair like that. Damn. Cute. It's very like David Bowie, you reckon? Like with the, the makeup and the hair. Space iPad. So here we go, I think it was one from each version. So I got Odie and Junhan. Yeah, so two different versions. They've got like the little signature on the back that's holographic, which is kind of cool. I like that. I love little holographic details like that, as you know. Pretty stingy to only have one photo card per album, in my opinion. I like this one a lot, actually. I think the expression is really cute. The hair is nice. And this, this one just looks like it's really edited. Like his skin looks so freaking pale. That really pisses me off but he looks quite natural here, which is nice. So that was a little look at the first physical release from Mercenary Heroes because Happy Death Day, unfortunately, was only a digital release and didn't have a physical album. Sad. So overall, I think Mercenary Heroes had a really strong debut. I think this was mostly to do with the fact that their concept was pretty unique. And I think we were really ready for a new like K-pop rock band. I think JYP was very smart in this respect. Day six at this point, I think they had gone on hiatus or maybe some of them were going to the military and things like that. So to bring out a new band at this point in time with this kind of concept was super, super smart. The debut song was cool, it was punchy. The music video went along with it really well. 
their debut stage. There was a little bit of nerves there, but I really think that they did come through and did a really great job. It also, of course, really helps that the boys are all super talented at what they do. They've only been improving more and more every single comeback, and I'm really excited to see where they go next. Thank you so much for joining me for my first video in my K-pop group debut series. I hope you learn a little bit about x Heroes and their debut, and you're looking forward to seeing who I'm going to talk about next. Let me know who you'd like me to cover in the comments down below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!